the GM of the Giants, Jerry Reese, joins us now live over the phone. Jerry, how you doing? Michael and Don here. Hey, good, guys. How you guys doing today? We're doing all right. So is this guy as great as everybody's making him out to be? Obviously, you thought he was special to use that, that draft pick, but what, what drew you to him? Well, we thought he was one of the one of the top players in the draft, not just at, at his position. We thought he was one of the top players in that in the draft, and we, we thought he'd probably get picked in front of us. To be honest with you, and uh, we're very happy that he was still there at twelve. You know, he's a, he's an exciting player. He's a he's an explosive outside receiver with that that great speed and great hands and ball skills, and uh, you know, he's a really good route runner for a young player. Most most college kids they don't run patterns like like this guy do. And, uh, you know, he's a top return specialist, a kick and punt return specialist. So there's a lot of things I like about him, and uh, we're, we're very fortunate, we think, to, to have him uh, to be there at 12. And we, now we you could have won offensive we thought, line. Don, we thought this guy could be a weapon for Eli Manning. You know, we've got to right. have some more weapons besides Victor Cruz, and, you know, we're hoping Ruben Randall will continue to, to, to evolve. Ruben, you know, people kill Ruben. Ruben led us in, in, in touchdown catches last year with six, so so he's not a throwaway. We think he's still going to develop, and along with Jernigan came on with some at the end, and we got Mario Manningham back, so we try to put some weapons around our quarterback. Yeah, there's no question about it. Now, the other thing you want to do is protect your quarterback, Jerry, so was there a temptation when Zach Martin was there to go for the needed offensive line? Well, well, you know, he he was still on the board, and he he was in the conversation, and and uh, you know, he was in a group of, of of names that we we had there with our pick, and uh, but we, we felt like uh, you know Odell Beckham was was we actually had the higher grade number one, and mm-hmm. we tried to stay with our board, and uh, and plus in the off season we we went out and tried to. Uh, Fix some of the things in our offensive line with free agency, and uh, so and we knew we would have a chance to, to look at some more offensive linemen, and we went with Richburg in the, in the second round, who we thought was the best center in the draft. All right, so you know you draft. Obviously, you know part of the deal is that people are going to analyze and scrutinize and pick apart. And one of the criticisms on Odell Beckham Jr. is that he's he's a little short. Was that a concern of yours? Well, you, you always like to have guys, you know, you know, skyscraper wide receivers, but it's just not always the case that, you know, and I, I don't always correlate to, to, to Super Bowl wins. And I, and, I, and I can just look back at last season's Super Bowl, you know, Seattle Seahawks, I, I don't know if they had one receiver over six foot tall. So, you know, it, it doesn't always correlate to, to, to wins and Super Bowl wins. Uh, would you like for your, all, all your receivers to be, you know, 6'3", 6'4", 6'5"? That'd be great, but uh, you can't always get that. But we think this guy has an outstanding skill set set and uh, will be a great addition to our receiver core. Tell us about the center you took in the second round. Richburg, you know, we, we felt like he was a, the, the top center. Uh, uh, we, we In free agency, we brought in J.D. Walter from, uh, you know, as a free agent who, who everybody knows that would missed the last season with, with an ankle injury, but was a terrific player before then. And uh, so we brought, the, you know, this center in to make sure that we have enough depth of that position and, and some competition. So it'll be, it'll be great competition to watch at that center position because we got two really good players at the center position and both of them are versatile to play different, to play the guard position as well. So, uh, and, and our center is, you know, with, with our new coordinator, uh, uh, McAdoo, you know, he, he makes some of the protection calls. Eli has been responsible for most of the protection calls uh, in, in, in our in our old offense, but in this new offense, the centers can be have have some responsibility to make some of the protection calls. And this guy's very smart. He's you know productive, a 50 game starter, uh, captain. So he has all the things that the traits you know big and tough that, that we like about their offensive linemen. All right, now you said something before the draft that you wanted a clean draft, and I assume that that meant. You didn't want problem children or stuff like that, guys with issues. Uh, is it hard to ignore them if they have a lot of talent? Well, it's always, you know, you look for, for players who are, you look for talent first, and, uh, you know, that, and then you, you, you try to see where these guys will fit in with respect to, you know, we, we always, it, you know injuries are, are always important to see what the injury history is and, 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 and the, their background, see what their background is. Uh, if you can, if you fortunate enough to get to what we call clean players who don't have a lot of issues, background issues or injury issues, you know, that, that's important for us. Um, you know, I think all teams, you know, are not looking to get you know bring guys in with a, with a lot of you know, checkered pass and, and and background issues that you have to deal with. So the cleaner the player you can get with the most talent, uh, that always works. Jerry, we had Henry Hynoski in studio on Thursday, and he talked about rave reviews with McAdoo's system. He says it's high flying, a lot of energy to it. Um, so when you see a little bit of a difference in the offensive coordinator now to maybe what Gilbright was, does that change the type of player you go out and draft? 
Not really. We just try. We just try to da- draft talented players, you know. And, uh, and obviously, you know, McAdoo has, has a skill set of different positions that that he likes. Uh, but but he assured us, you know, you give, get some talented players for we'll we'll make the adjustment to the players. And I think that's that's important for coaching because you can't always get a, the exact skill set that your coaches like. You know, all, all coaches want you know the fastest, you know, the biggest, the smartest, you know. But in personnel, you know, all personnel people know you can't get the perfect player every time. And uh, so you have to coach the guys that you have to their skill set. All right, let's have some fun here. Now, with the number 12 pick, I don't think you would have done this, but was Johnny Manziel on your board at all? Eli's getting older, coming off surgery. You've got to get a quarterback somewhere down the line. Maybe that's nasty, but I'm not sure. Was Johnny Manziel on your board at all? Yeah, he was on our board. Of course, he was on our board, but he wasn't up there at twelve at, at the twelfth pick for us. Right. Uh, you know, we we took the best player. We thought it at the twelfth pick, but but he was definitely on our board. Do you look at him as a player that could be a good player in the NFL? Well, all, all players, you know, old scout told me one time, any player can make it with talent. That if you want them to make it, you have to want players to make it. If you want them to make it, they can make it. So, uh, he he is a talented player, and and I I I got to believe that you know the team that drafted him is going to give him every opportunity to put him in position to be successful. And uh, so I I think he can be a good player in this league.